DDR1. At the start of the 2000s, computer memory took a massive leap forward with the introduction of DDR1, or Double Data Rate SD-RAM. Before DDR1, systems relied on older SD-RAM technologies that transferred data only once per clock cycle. DDR1 changed everything by enabling two transfers per cycle, instantly doubling effective bandwidth without increasing clock speed. Running at 2.5 to 2.6 volts, DDR1 was power-hungry by modern standards, but revolutionary at the time. Desktop modules used 184 pins, while laptop SODIMs used 200 pins, each with a single-centered notch that made DDR1 easy to identify. Speeds ranged from DDR200 to DDR400, delivering up to 3.2 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. Systems powered by the Intel Pentium 4 and AMD Athlon Thunderbird were the first mainstream PCs to adopt it. Technically, DDR1 used a 2 newtons prefetch buffer, meaning it pulled two bits of data internally for every external transfer. Module capacities usually topped out at 1 gigabyte per stick, tiny today, but enough to run Windows XP and early 3D games. DDR1 set the foundation for every DDR generation that followed, proving the double data rate concept worked and could scale. Without DDR1, the modern memory landscape wouldn't exist. DDR2 By 2003, software was becoming more demanding, and DDR1 couldn't keep up. Enter DDR2, a redesigned memory architecture built for higher throughput and better power efficiency. DDR2 dropped voltage from 2.5 volts down to 1.8 volts, immediately reducing heat output while improving overall stability. Desktop modules expanded to 240 pins, and although laptop SO DIMMs remained at 200 pins, the notch shifted slightly off-center, preventing accidental mismatches. DDR2 modules delivered speeds from 400 to 1066 MHz is effectively, with maximum bandwidth reaching around 8.5 GB per second, more than double DDR1. The biggest architectural upgrade was the move to a 4 newtons prefetch buffer, enabling the module to process larger data chunks per cycle. DDR2 also introduced on-die termination, which cleaned up electrical signaling and allowed for higher clock speeds without degrading reliability. Capacities also jumped significantly, with some modules offering 4 GB per stick, though most systems used 512 MB to 2 GB. DDR2 powered Intel Core 2 Duo, Pentium D, and early AMD Phenom systems, becoming the standard memory technology throughout the mid-2000s. While DDR2 improved bandwidth and efficiency, it sometimes suffered from higher latency, a trade-off that made it more of a stepping stone than a final solution, but it paved the way for everything that came next, DDR3. In 2007, computing entered a new era with DDR3, the first memory generation that still feels modern to many PC builders today. DDR3 ran at 1.5 volts, with lower power variants like DDR3L going even lower. But the star of this section is standard DDR3, which pushed speeds from 800 MHz all the way to 2,133 MHz with real-world bandwidth exceeding 17 GB per second. The biggest architectural upgrade was its 8 newtons prefetch buffer, doubling the internal data width of DDR2 and enabling more efficient transfers. DDR3 kept the 240-pin layout of DDR2, but the notch shifted, ensuring physical incompatibility. It also introduced flyby topology, improving signal stability as speeds increased. DDR3 modules reached 16 gigabytes per stick, a massive jump that made high-capacity workstations and early gaming PCs far more capable. Systems built on Intel's early core i-series processors like Nehalem, Sandy Bridge, and Ivy Bridge relied heavily on DDR3. AMD's FX series CPUs also used it extensively. Because of its balance of speed, low cost, and power efficiency, DDR3 remained mainstream for almost a decade. Even today, millions of older desktop and laptop systems still rely on it, proving just how long-lasting this generation turned out to be. DDR3L While DDR3 dominated desktops, DDR3L emerged as a solution for laptops and energy-efficient systems. The L stands for low voltage, and that's exactly what made it special. DDR3L dropped voltage from 1.5 volts to 1.35 volts, significantly reducing power consumption and heat. This made it ideal for ultrabooks, compact desktops, and enterprise environments where thermal limits mattered more than raw speed. Despite the lower voltage, DDR3L maintained full compatibility with most DDR3 memory controllers, and it supported the same speeds, topping out around 2,133 MHz. It still used a 240-pin layout on desktops and 204-pin layout on laptops with the same notch positions as standard DDR3. The performance improvement didn't come from higher clocks, but from better thermals and stability under sustained workloads. 
Laptops featuring Intel's third and fourth gen core processors like Ivy Bridge and Haswell often shipped exclusively with DDR3L for battery life benefits. Servers and industrial systems also adopted DDR3L to reduce long-term power costs. While DDR3 handled mainstream performance, DDR3L quietly powered billions of portable and embedded devices. It played a critical role in modernizing mobile computing, bridging the gap between high performance and energy efficiency before DDR4 took over. DDR4 By 2014, the world needed faster memory. Gaming was exploding, 4K video editing was rising, and multitasking demands were growing. DDR4 arrived as the perfect response. Running at 1.2 volts, DDR4 greatly improved efficiency. Pin count increased to 288 and the notch shifted again for safety. Speeds ranged from 2,133 MHz to 3,200 MHz officially, with real-world overclocks soaring much higher. Architecturally, DDR4 introduced bank groups, enabling simultaneous data access inside the module for better parallelism. It also added CRC error checking and improved voltage regulation, allowing for far more reliable high-speed operation. DDR4 unlocked massive module capacities, supporting up to 128 gigabytes per stick in consumer systems. DDR4 became the standard for nearly every build from Intel, Skylake onward, and remained the foundation of AMD Ryzen systems from 2017 to 2022. Affordable, stable, and easy to overclock, DDR4 powered everything from budget gaming PCs to high-end workstations. Even after DDR5's release, DDR4 remains popular because of its excellent price-to-performance ratio. For nearly a decade, DDR4 has been the backbone of both the gaming and productivity worlds, and it still has life left in it. DDR4 ECC In professional and enterprise environments, performance isn't the only priority. Reliability is king. That's where DDR4 ECC comes in. ECC stands for Error Correcting Code, a technology designed to detect and correct single-bit memory errors automatically. These errors can happen from electrical interference, cosmic radiation, or intense workloads. And while rare, they can corrupt data or crash systems. DDR4 ECC uses the same 288-pin layout as regular DDR4, but with additional memory bits dedicated to storing parity information. These extra bits allow ECC modules to correct errors on the fly, making them essential for servers, scientific computing, financial systems, and mission-critical workstations. Capacities for ECC modules often match or exceed regular DDR4, with up to 128GB per stick being common. Pairing DDR4's already strong bandwidth, over 25GB per second per module, with ECC stability created a perfect match for industries where accuracy and uptime were non-negotiable. While gamers and everyday users don't typically need ECC, professionals running VMs, simulations, databases, or cloud services rely on it every day. DDR4 ECC ensured data integrity throughout the late 2010 and early 2020 and continues to power countless servers worldwide. DDR5 In 2021, computing entered a new era with the release of DDR5, a monumental upgrade built for the next decade of gaming, AI, and high-performance computing. DDR5 maintains the 288-pin format but shifts the notch once again. It operates at just 1.1 volts, further improving efficiency Base speeds begin at 4,800 MHz, with many kits running at 6,000 to 8,000 MHz and cutting-edge overclocks surpassing 9,600 MHz. Bandwidth per module starts above 38 GB per second. DDR5's real innovation lies in architecture. A 16 newtons prefetch, dual independent 32-bit subchannels, and on-die ECC combine to reduce latency and increase parallel throughput. Additionally, Power regulation moves onto the module via PMIC chips, stabilizing high-speed operation. DDR5 first launched with Intel Alder Lake and later with AMD Ryzen 7000 processors. It was designed specifically for workloads where massive data throughput matters, 4K, 8K, editing, AI processing, simulation, and high-end gaming. While DDR5 is still more expensive and can run hot at extreme speeds, its potential is enormous. It's the memory architecture that will dominate the next decade of computing. DDR5R DIMM For the final tier of modern memory, we reach DDR5R DIMM, the heavy-duty enterprise-grade version of DDR5 used in servers, data centers, and large-scale AI workloads. R DIMM stands for Registered DIMM, meaning each module uses a register to buffer commands, reducing electrical load and enabling stability at massive capacities. 
DDR5 RDIMM modules support jaw-dropping sizes, up to 512GB PER stick, and even larger in specialized systems. Combined with DDR5's base bandwidth exceeding 38GB per second, our DIMMs allow servers to move enormous datasets with speed and reliability. Like standard DDR5, RDIMMs use ONDI ECC, dual channels per DIMM, and PMIC power regulation, but they are engineered for non-stop 24 7 operation. These modules power the infrastructure behind cloud computing, AI model training, large-scale simulations, enterprise databases, and medical research. If standard DDR5 is built for enthusiasts, DDR5 RDIM is built for the backbone of the digital world. It's the final evolution for now of DDR technology, optimized for maximum capacity, maximum reliability, and maximum throughput. Before you go, tell me this. Which DDR jump gave you the biggest performance shock? Comment below, and if you made it this far, you're officially part of the Bite Me crew. Tap like, subscribe, and let's keep leveling up.